Hello everyone, how are you? I hope you are doing well. Okay, good. So it was a great session uh, yesterday. I was really amazed by your uh, comments, questions, feedback, interaction, discussions. That's um, really wonderful, okay. Good, so before starting, I want you to, um, to remind me about what we covered exactly yesterday, yesterday's session. Can you just write what we talked about exactly? Yes, something important that you learned about. Can you write in the chat box? Approaches and methods, Karim, good. Ben Ramak, the methods and approaches, teaching is autonomous, good. Ines, all right. Uh, Fuad, methods and approaches, okay, good. Ines, teaching, it depends, yeah. Khawla, we have covered the difference between appro the approaches, good. Huda, methods in teaching, good. All right, direct method, Yahya, four approaches, interest in Muntasir approaches and methods. Very good, the importance of TEFL. Yes, we talked about the importance of teaching English as a foreign language. Uh, and there is no perfect approach. Very good, Kautar. Umayma, methods and approaches, Ramak, uh, uh, grammar translation, TPR, DM, and uh, communication language teaching. Okay. All right, that's interesting. Okay. So remember last time we said that there is no perfect, there is no perfect method or approaches, but it depends. It depends on what? So remember, it depends on the level of your learners. It depends on the type of the lesson. It depends on the size of the classroom. It depends on the interest of your learners, the attitude of your learners. So there are many conditions that you have to take into account. Then you choose the right approach or method. Okay, good. So before sharing, okay. Yeah, or let me first, yeah, share the... The second module will be about teaching grammar, but teaching grammar um, communicatively. All right. So please, can you write in the chat box? Do you see? Yes or no? Not yet, so let me share. What about now? Do you see now? Yes, can you write the chat box? Okay, that's interesting. So you see. Good. So the second session of the free TEFL course, um, 20 hours, is about teaching grammar, not just teaching grammar, but teaching grammar communicatively. It means there must be communication because we we uh, view language as a means of communication. So when you are teaching grammar, you have to think about the materials, the activities, the techniques, strategies, the interaction between you and, and your learner. All these must be based on communication. Okay. So let me just raise this one. Okay, good. Now, these are um, the objectives of today. We are going to start with the introduction. It's a kind of warm up. Then the approaches to teaching grammar, the strategies, the techniques used to um, teach grammar communicatively. And then we are going to practice classroom applications. Then at the end, there is a review and a conclusion. So these are the tips or sorry, the points we are going to cover today. Good, now, as a warm up, number one, imagine you are trying to learn a new skill. It can be fishing, it can be soccer, it can be um, any other skills. So number one, do you, prefer, do you prefer to be told how to do it? Do you prefer someone to tell you how to do it? or to be shown, they just show you how to do it, or you by yourself read how to do it, or try using it and find out for yourself, or a combination of these. Now, are going to learn a new skill. It can be fishing, 
playing soccer, playing tennis, climbing. Okay, these are skills, for example. Communication skills. So which one do you prefer? Can you write in the chat box? All right. So to be told how to do it, to be shown how to do it, to read how to do it, to try using it and find out for yourself or a combination of everyone. Okay. Yes, sir. I can see your chat box. I don't know what's wrong. So let me stop sharing first. Okay. So remember number one, to be told how to do it. Number two, to be shown how to do it. Number um, three, to read how to do it. Number four, to try using it and find out for yourself. And the last one is a combination. Let me stop sharing to see your slides. So um, for those combination, Linda combination. Okay, then uh, Iman, a partnership between the teacher and students is better, okay. Naima, combination, ML combination, Ines combination, mixing all of these, Asma good, Baradi, Hanan combination. All right, Siri, combination, Sukaina combination. That's interesting. So you need to combine all these things to learn that skill. Okay, let me go back to my slides. All right, that's interesting. Good. Now, would you learn the grammar language following the same principles? Why or why not? We are learning grammar. Now, you talked about the new skill. Now, what about learning grammar language? Would you follow the same pr principles? Yes or no? Why or why not? Can you please again write in the chat box to see some of the? All right. So, Nordin, yes. Uh, Ines, it's a new skill too, yes. Ben Ramak, yes. Ashraf, yes. Good. Uh huh. Khawla, yes. Not all of them, Muna. All right. Abdurrahim, yes. Karim, yes. It would, it would be enriching. Interesting. Yahya, yes. Naima, yes. Salman, Bay, yes. Okay. Mustaqil, Jihad, yes. Umayma, yes. In order to get a better understanding. Very good. Iman, yes. Firdaus, Huda, Arus, yes. All right, that's interesting. So today's session will be about the techniques, strategies, approaches, okay, of teaching grammar. All right, good. So this is just an introduction, warm up. Now, this is a situation here. Leila is a student. Now you put yourself in the shoes of Leila. So Leila spends so much time preparing a grammar lesson. Leila is going to teach a grammar lesson. So, so she is or she spent a lot of time on how to use simple past so the lesson is about simple past regular regular and irregular forms so two types with her beginner level students the lesson simple past the type two types regular irregular the level beginners good she used a variety of sentences that provided the examples of different rules and explain these to students. The, they then completed some gap fill, gap filling exercise sentences, which they all got correct. So she used a variety of sentences. She provided examples of different rules. She explained to students. Then practice. The practice is gap filling task or exercise. Four days, once Leila finished teaching her learners. After four days later, Leila collected in some written emails from her students. It's writing. And she taught before grammar. The writing, of course, will be about the past. Talk about what happened to you last weekend or something like that. This work contained many mistakes, especially mistakes in the way her students use simple past. Leila felt frustrated because she had prepared and prepared and prepared 
carefully for her lesson, but in vain. At the end, students made mistakes in or in using simple past form. Now, how would you help Leila? Number two, what do you think was wrong with her lesson? Number three, draw down your ideas on your partner. So let's start with number one. Please answer only number one. How could you help Leila? Read the situation. I'm going to give you one minute. Please don't write in the chat box. One minute. Read the situation, then you write. Only question number one. So one minute. Karima Amel, please, one minute, then we can write. Iman, Khadija, one minute. All right. So read the situation carefully, then you tell me how would how could you help Leila? All right, now let's start. Nordin said using context. Excellent. Um, Asma, she did she is or she give them the rule of simple past, explain more in mother tongue. Ines, using the mother tongue. Uh-huh. Interesting. Muad, by telling her to find about the real root of the problem. Practice makes perfect. Hasna, good. Tina, communicate communicative way. Good. Our contextualization, Linda Smith. All right. Mariam, she could add games. Excellent. I like it. Using games, fun activities. Brady Hannah, she could start the lesson by attacks. Contextualization. All right. So start with a, with a context. I like it. Using games. I love it. Okay. She had to make them practice through other ways. Very good. Variety of activities. Siren or Siren filling the gap is not sufficient. Perfect. I like this idea. Gap filling is not sufficient. All right. Ashraf, she could get to know her students. Learning styles, different learning styles. Perfect. Okay. Halima, using competitive games like memory games. Wonderful. Ramdi, she could start with real life situations. Perfect. Good. Now, question number two. What do you think was wrong with her lesson? What is the problem with her teaching, with her um, teaching style? What was wrong with, with Leila? Can you write again in the chat box? Lack of practice. Saudi Kautar, good. Yeah, Hamza, using only one type. All right. Just one exercise. Good. She used didactive. Abjbani, good. Alex, I think. Yeah, what if Leila? I think. Leila provided her students with, yeah, she taught them directly, Muna, with the lack of smart preparation of the lesson. Wonderful. One learning style, good. Now, all right, Sarah, students get bored easily. Yeah, all right, good. Yeah, that's interesting. Now, jot down your ideas on your paper. Good. Now, for number one, how could you help Leila? Number one, Leila should know that she is not teaching beginner level students. Do you remember last time I said, I am not teaching beginner. I'm teaching what? Do you remember what I said? Can you write in the chat box? I'm teaching what? I'm teaching what? I'm not teaching beginners or advanced. Excellent Ines. I'm teaching 30 students, 10 students Ines. I like it. I'm teaching a number of students. I'm teaching a group of learners, uh, which means mixed ability classes, mixed ability learners, different levels. Okay, so please, let's switch. Don't say I teach beginners, I teach advanced, I teach ninth grade, seventh grade, first grade. No, no. I teach a number of learners, several learners, having different learning styles. All right, interest. This is number one. How could you help Leila? We tell her, number one, to have a variety. Variety of what? Of activities. Here there is only one activity, gap filling. And the problem is based on the level of sentences. Sentences. Where is communication? Where is conversation? Where are dialogues? Where, where are role plays? Where are discussions? So this is how we teach grammar communicatively using communicative activities. So gap filling is not a communicative activity. Please underline this. Gap filling task is not 
and um, communicative activity. Good, this is number one. Number two, what do you think was wrong with her lesson? Number one, we say learning is a process. Very important. Learning is a process. You are teaching beginners. How come? You teach the two. You teach regular and irregular. No, no way. Learning is a process. The first session, I'm going to focus only on regular verbs. Next, the coming days, the coming sessions, I'm going to focus on exceptions, irregular, because here I'm teaching beginners. So here, Leila forgot that she added challenges when she was teaching the simple past. This is number one, what was wrong with her. Number two, she did not provide them with different tasks in the practice stage. She focused only on gut feeling. And the most important, she missed the last stage, which is the production the production stage in which students are going to use the language freely. The teacher is going to observe if students learned the, the, the structure or not. All right, any comments so far? Any comment, is it clear so far? Okay, thank you. So please, we can learn from her situation. Number one, learn is a process. Don't bombard them. You are teaching a reported speech. Don't teach all the types in one session. No, I'm going just to focus on um, um, positive or affirmative sentences and questions, then advice, then suggestions, etc. If I'm teaching passive voice, I'm not going to teach all the types, simple present, simple past, present continuous, past continuous. Future perfect, no, no way. I'm, I'm going to focus only on the present forms, the next session past forms, the next sessions, the future forms. Learning is a process. Number two, what we have learned from our situation, students needs, or sorry, need more practice, especially communicative activities, interaction. Students, students. Okay, good. Now, let's move on. Now the feedback here for uh, or about Leila's um, situation, learn is a process. It's hard for beginners to teach them the two past forms in one session. Number two, she used sentence level examples when she taught the lesson. Students found it hard to use the forms in text. Once students want to write the email in the simple past, they couldn't write it. Why? Because she taught them using just sentences. But if she told them in the writing to write sentences, sentence one, sentence two, maybe they would get correct answers or correct forms of the simple past. Now, the key here that we have to learn. Number one, there are different ways of teaching grammar, not just one way, different approaches. Number two, no one individual method suits all grammar points and all students. We can use grammar translation, Communicative language teaching, TPR, direct method, or eclectic, yeah, we mix them all. Okay, number three, you should vary. Some of you talked about variety. You should vary your approach to teaching grammar, to cater for different learning styles. Because I'm not teaching beginners, I'm teaching 40 students, 35 students. Okay, good, now, when we want to teach grammar communicatively, we should uh, uh, adopt the communicative language teaching approach. Can you remind me, what are its principles, communicative language teaching? Can you please write in the chat box? Deductive approach, very good, Ines. You are very active, by the way, yeah, interesting. Yes, ML, put language in situation. Excellent, Karim, very good, deductive. Awatef, I like it, contextualization. Students is the heart, very good, Miriam. Tina, context, I like it. Kautar, uh, providing context, good. Real life situations, Shagawi, good. 
Okay, Huda, Conchax, Mehdan, Didactive. Authentic language, Shargawi, I like it. Authentic materials, good language. Building interest, Jibani, interesting. China, real life situations. Yes, you got all of them. Yeah, I liked these um, principles. Realia, China again, good. All right, that's interesting. Yes, so let's see here. So we teach lessons that are student centered. The heart of the learning process is not the teacher, it's the learner. I'm going to go home. I'm going to design my lesson based on the learner's needs, based on the learner's wants, based on the learner's age, based on the learner's levels, based on the learner's interests. In business, the king, the queen is the customer. In education, the king and the queen is the learner. All right. Now, number two, we create opportunities for students to use English actively. Communicative activities, real life situations, doctor, patient, servant, customer, or um, etc. When you go to the restaurant, waiter, and you, the customer. So real life situations. Number three, we create context for language. What do we by context? Context can be a text. You start with a text. You start with a dialogue. You start with pictures, visual context, contextualization. Personalization, telling a story is context. Using your body, you are creating context. So these are all types. Listening to the audio is context. Number four, we help students reach beyond their comfort zone. I'm not teaching, when I adopt communicative language approach, I'm not teaching only in class, but I'm helping my learners to implement these outside. Doctor, patient. So when you go outside, you can practice this with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues, etc. Okay. Yes. Let's move on. Now, let's start now teaching grammar. I'm going to present, I'm going to present two presentations about teaching grammar. And your job is number one, which lesson did you prefer and why? Number two, name the approaches that sum or sums up each lesson. All right, so I'm going to start with the first one. I'm going to teach simple past. So then I move to the second presentation about the simple past. So presentation number one, uh, are you ready? Yes, please. Do you hear me? Okay, good. So hello, my students, how are you? Fine, good, that's nice. Yes, Jalal, how are you? Good, fine or good or great. Fine, yeah, Leila? Great, excellent. Why great? Oh, you had a lot of fun. That's amazing. Good. Today, we are going to study a grammar lesson about simple past. All right. So, the simple past of regular verbs is verb plus ed. Verb plus ed. I played yesterday. I played tennis yesterday. Yesterday, I watch TV. Yesterday, I cooked a nice food. So repeat, played tennis, played tennis. I cooked, I cooked. All right. So this is a simple past. It's an action that happened in the past. Okay, is this clear? Good. So this is presentation number one. Now, let me move to presentation number two. This is the presentation number one. So the presentation number one, the teacher writes on the board, the simple pass of regular verbs is verb plus ed. Teacher gives examples. I played, I watched. Now, presentation number two. Hello, my students. How are you? Fine? Or good or great? Who is great? Wow. Again, Muna, great. Jalel? Fine, yes, why? 
You have a problem. Okay, yeah, I see, no problem, okay. Good. Now, today we are going to start or to study a very interesting lesson. Good. So let me show you something very interesting. Look here. How many pictures are there? How many? Yes, uh, Nora, four. Excellent. So let me tell you about my last weekend. My last weekend. So picture number one. Last weekend, I watched a film with my family. I watch a film with my family. The second activity last weekend, I played soccer with my family in the forest. I played soccer with my family in the forest. The third activity is I listen to music. I listen to music. And I, it was very relaxing. And at the end, the last activity last weekend, we danced with the family, listening to different music, different types, pop music, rock music. Do you like dancing? Jalal, I, again, you don't like dancing. All the time you feel bored. Muna, you like it? Very good. Yeah, dancing is good. All right. So these are two. So here, now, let me write on the board. I watch TV with the family. I played soccer with the family. I listen to music alone. I dance with the family. What do they have in common? Four sentences. Can you observe? What do they have in common? Yes, sir. Said. Verbs. Very good. Verbs. Good. Can someone tell me also what do they have in common? Nisreen. Oh, thank you. Can you come, come, come? To, yeah, go to the board. Underline. What do they have in common? EV. Excellent. I'm going to give you plus one. Go to the board. Underline. Good. This is presentation number two. Now let's go back to the, the presentation. Yeah, the, the, I mean the task. Which lesson did you prefer and why? Can you write in the chat box? The, the first presentation or the second? Two. Yahya said two. Two. Brady, two. Sirin, two. Umayma, two. Linda, two. Ashraf, two. Okay, Sukaina, two. Thank you. Yeah, both Imad. Good. Yeah, you are special. Sarah, two. Badia, two. Hind. Okay. So no one, no one said presentation number one. Why? Why is you don't, you didn't like presentation number one? Why? For which purpose? Why? I'm Jibani one, yeah. Okay. Teacher, student, good. Yeah, Jamali, yes, sir. Yahya. Okay, it's boring. Fatima, boring. Explicit, more if, yeah. All right. Deductive, who else said, Linda? No interaction. Old way. No interaction. Boring. Students are passive. Good. Nordin, number two, is, the, is more motivate. Yeah, there's motivation. Traditional number one, Ramak said, okay. Negative, Yahya. Not students, folks. Okay, Maryam, teacher centered. Excellent. Good. I liked your um, remark and comments. Name the approaches. For, for number one, which approach, which grammar approach? Which one, number one? Yes. Grammar translation method, deductive. Okay, deductive. TPR, in, inductive? Number one, inductive? It's number two. What do you think? Inductive or deductive? So num it's number one, just number one, number one. Deductive, deductive. Okay, deductive, good. So here the approach is a grammar translation method, for example, okay, or yeah, it's deductive. Or there is another name, teaching grammar as a product. Teaching grammar as a product or as a process. Presentation number one, is teaching grammar, you give them the product. You give them everything. Okay. And presentation number two is a process. There is communication, pushing learners to observe, to interact, to find the rule by themselves. Okay, good. So what do they use? Or oh, sorry, what did I use to help learners 
understand the form of presentation number two. What techniques I used? Yes, can you write? Pictures, very good, Ines. Linda, visuals, interesting. Uh, Umema, pictures, direct pictures, dialogues, excellent. Games, pictures, contacts, Saudiya. Miming, very good. Animation, excellent. Zwin Najia, games, ICT. Storytelling, very good. Contextualization, more video, good. But yeah, not video, but VA, visual aids, competitive games. All right, that's interesting. And also, I used color coding. I said, go to the board, Nisreen, and underline the ED, color coding, to, to help them observe. It's, an, it's a very important technique. You highlight the form. You highlight the structure. Okay, is this clear so far? Okay, now to, mo to motivate them, I use pictures, okay? Eliciting some questions to get uh, information, give them positive feedback, very good, great job, nice. I'm gonna give you plus one. These are techniques to motivate your learners, to engage them, okay, good. Now, let's move on to the next slide. Now, Fill in the gaps. I'm gonna give you four minutes, please, four minutes. Fill in the gaps with the right words in the list. Learner-centered, time-saving, inductive approach, teacher-centered, deductive approach takes time. So you read them and you fill in the gaps. Four minutes, yes. So three minutes left, three minutes. Yeah, please don't answer. When you say start, then you start, okay. Classroom management. Okay. Basically, I say to my learners, give me five to listen to my instructions. Five or high five. Your mouth is zipped. Stop talking. Your eyes are on the speaker, the teacher. Number three, your ears are listening. Number four, your mind is focused. You concentrate on me. And number five, your feet and hand still like this. Give me five. All my students do like this. They do like this and they say, no, close your mouth. Then it's classroom management. Everyone is quiet. Because if you say, keep quiet, don't make noise, please. No, they, don't, they won't um, keep quiet. But when you teach them, give me five, it works. It means just stop, stop everything. So let's correct. Let's start with number one. There are two main approaches to teaching grammar. These are the deductive and the inductive approach. Number one uh, is when the rule is presented. We, like presentation number one, you give them the rule, the structure, the form. The simple part of regular verbs is verb plus ed. What is this? So let me see the answer. Deductive, good. It's deductive, yes. Um, the teacher gives the rule, an inductive good is when the rule is inferred through some form of guided discovery, guided discovery. Students will discover the rule by themselves. How? Color coding, asking questions. What do they have in common? Okay, using pictures. 
So guided discovery. The teacher gives the students a means to discover the rule for themselves. In other words, the former is more, was the answer, is more teacher-centered, teacher-centered, teacher-centered. All right. So the, the first one, okay. And the latter, more learner-centered. Okay. Both approaches have their advantages and disadvantages. So there is no perfect method, no perfect approach, no perfect way. Okay. In my own experience, the deductive approach is undoubtedly, is it time saving or it takes time? Time consuming or time saving or takes time? It's time saving from the very beginning given the rule and allows more time for practicing the language items thus making it an effective approach with low level students the inductive approach on the other hand takes time if you compare presentation one with presentation number two the presentation number one is very short the presentation number two is a teaching ground as a process it takes time now if you are teaching evening classes teaching second back quickly Reported speech is this, simple part is this, but if you are teaching at school and you are adopting communicative language teaching, it takes a lot of time. Okay, good. So let's see the answers here. So number one, didactive, inductive, teacher-centered, learner-centered, time-saving, and takes. Yeah. Yeah, takes time, not take time, yeah. Okay, takes time. Okay, good. So two main approaches to teaching grammar, deductive and inductive. Deductive, you start, number one, the rule. You give them the structure, you give them the product, teaching grammar as a product. Then you provide them with examples. Learners are very passive. You spin, sorry, you spoon feed. Yeah, you are the spoon feeder. You give them information and they are very passive. They don't observe, they are just listening. They, they are just consumers. They just consume, okay, what you give them. So moving from the rule, we start with the rule or from the rule. Inductive examples, why examples? Examples stands for context, contextualization. Pictures, story, text, conversation, etc. okay. And then you ask them questions, color coding, you underline to observe the form. So we are moving into the rule. So there is no perfect, but it depends. It depends on the lesson. If you have a very complicated grammar lesson, maybe deductive is the best. If you have an easy grammar lesson, maybe inductive is the best in this situation, okay. So no comments so far? No comment? So Tina said, show me, I'll forget, involve me, I'll remember, or yeah, perfect. Okay, all clear. Thanks, Ines. So let's move to the next one. Okay. Now, practice. So look at this lesson. This is a grammar lesson about present continuous. Now, I want you to focus on approaches to teaching grammar. Which approach is used or, it, um, or this lesson focuses on? So let's start here. Just follow me, please. So this is activity number one. Read the dialogue and answer these questions. Who is Libby? Where is Mehdi from? Where is the club located? What is this? What is this? The first activity for what's the purpose? For what? For which purpose? So, for which purpose? Excellent awatif al-baz contextualization. Excellent jibani building interest. Introduction in as good. Setting, contextualization, umayyam building interest, kawsar. Sayin or sirin, yes, to discuss, present. It's creating context, building interest. Okay, presenting the lesson. Okay, good. 
And what's the purpose here? There is picture. Why? Some, some novice teachers skip the picture, but the picture is used for one reason, which is you are teaching 30 students, different learning styles, visual learners, to facilitate the learning process. So there's a purpose. Yes or no? Do you agree or not? Okay, good. Look here. There is a conversation. So this is the context. We can say number one, eh, number one is uh, which type of questions? What do we call it in uh, teaching? Number one. Read the dialogue and answer these questions. What are these? What do we call them? There is a greeting to activate the schemata, open-ended WH questions, introduction, WH questions, pre-reading. Okay. Isolating the target. Uh-huh. Excellent, Kautar Lamrani. <laughs> Bravo, Kautar Lamrani. Leading questions. We call them lead in questions or focus questions. So please remember, lead in or focus questions because they will elicit information about the main structure, the main content of the, the lesson. All right, so focus questions or lead in questions. Okay, so we call them lead in questions or focus questions. Okay, nice. Now, number two. Activity number two, underline, 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 all the forms of the verb be in the dialogue, then complete the, the, the grammar table. What is this? So what is this? Practice, and some, and Japan said pra practice, guided, it's not guided questions, color coding, presentation stage, color coding Leila, discovering Fatima Zahra, study, good. Discovering, activate, Imad, Linda, eliciting, good, Shargawi, highlighting and isolating, good, discovering the rule, excellent, Zinub, discovering, Ramdani, good, Jamal Ramdi, mechanical task. Yeah, here the purpose is noticing. Number one, presentation, you present. Number two, observation, highlighting, highlighting the form. Okay. And here we have color coding, look, blue color. Okay, so number one, presentation. You create the context, you build interest. Number two is noticing, how to help them, using a chart. And look here, we are using a table for visual learners again. Color coding, etc. okay. That's interesting. Now let's move to the next. Number three, complete the dialogue with the correct form of the verb be. What is this? What is this? Production, Ramak said. Production, Si Muhammad, fill in the gap. Uh -huh. Practice, good. Practice, practice, Nadia. Practicing, yeah. Khawla, practicing, practice and production. So number three is practice. And there are two types of practice. Restricted practice and freer practice or production. Let me write it here. This is a restricted practice. Students, they don't have freedom to express themselves, but they have to complete. Uh, look, look here. Leila, remember the situation of Leila? She used the practice task in terms of the sentence level, sentence level. So when it was writing, 
they couldn't write an email because writing an email there is a text paragraph look here there is a conversation is this communicative activity or not what do you think it's gut feeling but it is communicative activity you see my point this is the difference between Leila's lesson and this lesson this is this is based on communication but if you write just sentences, students will not practice the language. They will just say one sentence and stop. But if there is conversation, interaction, that's wonderful. Good. Now we finish with the restricted practice. Now let's move to the next. The next one is who am I? Work in pairs or in small groups. Ah, uh, look here. What is this? Production. Good. We call it production or, or what? Another name. Or free practice or free practice. Very good. Free practice or production. So free practice or production. Here, students have got the freedom to express, to use their own language, underline this. Free practice students are going to use their own language. Restricted practice, no. They cannot use their own language, what they have learned. They are restricted, just complete, just fill the gap. But here there is collaboration, communication, interaction. Okay, is this clear so far? This is what we call teaching grammar communicatively. Teaching grammar communicatively. Okay, good. The production stage is very important and students need time to practice. And your job as a teacher to monitor, to see is your lesson was clear for your learners or not. If students cannot interact, if students uh, make a lot of mistakes, if students get confused, it means there is something wrong either with your classroom management or the way you teach or something like that. Okay. All right, so this is the Moroccan book. It is the Outlook. So no, it is Ticket. Ticket to English, first back. It's a Moroccan book. Okay. Is it clear so far? Good, so let's move on to the next. Good, now another one, another grammar. So compare and contrast grammar lesson or this grammar lesson with the previous one. You are going to compare and contrast this lesson with the, the other one. You compare approaches, activities used and techniques. This is the, the book, first back. Uh, sorry, Common Core. It's the 10th grade, 10th grade outlook. Here the grammar lesson is about used to. Past habit activities. Okay, so let's see here, you compare number one, look here, activity number one, activity number two, activity number three. Before we compare, and activity number four. Let's identify. Activity number one, what's the purpose? Activity number one, what's the purpose? Write the chat box again. What's the purpose? Leading questions, excellent. Is contextualization, there is context, yes or no? Yes, is there a picture? Yes or no? Is there a picture? Yes. So what kind of questions would you ask your learners? What kind of questions would you ask your learners about the picture? What, what do you see? Good. Yeah, what do you see, Sukaina? Good. Who is she? Good. Observe. What can you see? Good. Nadia, what does it re uh, represent? Good. Direct questions. Now, when you are teaching beginners, it's very easy, okay? All right? So you can say here, 
Hello everyone, how are you? Good, that's nice. All right. Look here, is there a picture or not? Yes. How many people are there? Two, very good job. Uh -huh. Two boys, what do you think? Two boys. Do you agree with Jamal? He said two boys. Leila, no. A boy and a girl. Yes, Jamal. Karim, is he a boy or a girl? A girl. Karima, a boy. No. Karima is a girl and Karim is a boy. So here we have a girl. What are they doing now? Reading. All right. Or maybe in the past, they used to read. So these are questions that you can ask, okay, for the pictures. Don't skip pictures, please. Pictures is a kind of visual representation or visual presentations. They really help to facilitate the learning process. Slow learners can understand through um, having a look at different pictures. Good. Then you say, yeah, look at this. Is it a text or a paragraph or an email? What do you think? Or a conversation? Oh, it's a conversation. Very good. How did you know? Ah, two people. How many people are there? One or two? Two. Three. Good. Lucy, Yasin. Oh, just two. Okay, two people. Yes, this is just warm up, leading questions, uh, motivating learners, building interest. Not from the very beginning. Today, we are going to learn about past habits. I use two plus bare infinitive. No, no. Students are demotivated, they are passive, etc. Okay. Now, activity number two. Study the sentence with used to in the dialogue and choose the correct option. What is this number two? Activity number two, what's the purpose? What's the purpose? Can you please write in the chat box? Yes, noticing, presenting, present. Is it presenting or noticing? Yes, <laughs> highlighting is noticing, is observation. Okay, is noticing, okay. You are given the rule. It can be also presentation if you want to start with the um, deductive approach. But here it's noticing. So we are going to observe. Uh, we are going to highlight the, the form or the use. To highlight what? The form or the use or both. The two, we use, use to is the form. And number two or number three or number one, habits in the past is the use. We are highlighting the form and the use. Okay, number three. Ah, very interesting, number three. Complete this sound about yourself. Is this a communicative activity or non-communicative activity? It's practice, yeah. Is communicative or not? Is communicative or not? Yes, not communicative involving students, yes. Okay. So it is restricted practice. So number three, complete this sentence about yourself. But basically, it's not communicative. There is no communication because the learner is going to work alone. Communication, please. When we talk about communicative activities, we talk about role plays. We talk about discussions, debates, conversations, dialogues, interaction. Okay, so these are communicative activities. But here, it's somehow not communicative because this is going to write and then talk, okay? But if they are going to compare, complete the sentences about yourself and then compare with your partner, it's communicative. You agree with me? Okay? All right. Now, activity number four. Write three more similar sentences about your life as a child. What is this? Restricted or free practice? 
free. Why it's free? Because learners are going to use their own, underline, own language. They are going to express themselves. Okay, they are free to use the language. Now, if we compare, if we compare, which one is, is, is communicative based? Which one? Is it number one? Or is it less number one or less number two? Is more communicative based approach? It's number one. All the activities are based on communication. It's number one. But the second one, there is no um, dialogues or um, uh, working together or in groups, etc. All right. Good. So no comments so far? No question? Okay. Thank you. Clear? Yes, Karim. Everything is well. Yeah. Una, clear. All right. So the, everything is clear. Thank you. So let's move on to the next. We are going to go back to this lesson, by the way, at the end. Now, PPP model. If you want to teach grammar communicatively, it's good, it's effective to adopt the PP presentation, practice, production. Do you hear me now? Do you hear me? 
All right. Yeah, there was a technical issue. You know, internet. Okay, so let me share again the slides. Okay, just one second. All right, that's good. So we were talking about the PPP, presentation, practice, and production. This is a very important model, okay? All right. So you can start your, your grammar lessons with the presentation. You can use demonstration, you demonstrate, or personalization, like stories, or situation, you create a situation, or you give them examples, or you explain or text. There are different ways of using or of presenting the grammar lesson, different ways. Most um, uh, textbooks you will see or you will notice that they start with a text. They give you a text or a conversation or a paragraph or an email, okay? And sometimes you can start with listening. Listening is a text, it's an audio, okay? Okay, now for practice, you have different tasks. Multiple choice task or answers, gut feeling, matching, completion task, etc. And for the production, role plays, discussions, debates, conversations, descriptions, etc. Okay, so this is the PPP. We are going to go deeper in the coming slides. Okay, is this clear so far about the three P's? Yeah? Yes or no? Okay, just one second. Good. So let me share with you the next slide. Now here, the tips, the techniques. When you are using grammar, it's very important. It's a must. You should use color coding. You highlight. You know why? Because I am a slow learner. I'm a slow learner. I'm gonna I'm gonna see on the board I played and ED colored with red color. I'm gonna ask myself, I'm a slow learner because color coding will help me as a slow learner, as a visual learner, for example. But there is something special with this verb. There is ED. So please use color coding or diagramming. Diagramming you can you can underline or circle, etc. Okay, good. All right. Yes. Um, next is look here. I played tennis yesterday. I didn't tell my learners that the simple past of regular verb is ed, but it's self discovery or guided discovery. It's they observe. She watched a movie last night. Or you can use timeline. You know why? Why we should use the timeline? Can you write here why exactly? For which purpose we use a timeline or timelines when we are teaching tenses? What do you think? Why do we use timelines? Yeah, any answer? To demonstrate. Good. So yeah, yeah, demonstrate, brainstorming ML. No. To facilitate. Excellent. Yeah, for the brain, Emel said, sorry, yeah. To clarify, Abdurrahim, Karim, to make it easy, all right? To, uh, to show when the action is taking place. Mr. Alex, simple to leave them, okay? Shows time sequence. Ikram, yeah, Kautar, to remind them how to create challenge. To create challenge or to facilitate? Are we here adding challenges or facilitating the learning process? Khawla, what do you think? To facilitate, to facilitate, yes. Here, we are using timelines to compare and contrast, to compare and contrast for the sake of facilitating the learning process. Students, once they compare and contrast, they master the language. Okay. Past, present, future, okay. They know how to compare and to contrast. That, yeah, I'm a logic, in, yeah, brain system, good. Analysis, Tina, very good. So it is used for which, for which type of learners? Visual, logic, 
Classical learners, kinesthetic, verbal, auditory, for which one? All of them, yeah, visual learners and log visual and logical, yeah, visual and logical, okay. Basically for visual learners, logical. Okay, good. Number three, when you are teaching grammar communicatively, very interesting technique, KISS stands for keep it short and simple. Please, when you give instructions, when you, when you want to explain the rule, when you want to present the lesson, blah, 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 talking a lot will confuse your learners. Don't tell me, but show me. Very short, okay. Picture, look at, look at this picture. What do you see? Finish. What do you see? Very short, simple and clear. Not, yeah, here there is a picture and the picture is uh, a bi it's big uh -huh, and there are a lot of people. Uh -huh, who are those people? Uh, so it's, yeah, it's worthy and students get confused. So kiss, it's really important. Keep it short and simple. Now, number four, fun activities. You know why? Students may feel bored. One hour, two hours is a lot sitting. Okay, so create a fun and enjoyable learning environment using games. Okay, all right. Number five is error correction. Error correction. Here, students, when they learn about the structure of course, they will make mistakes okay errors but the most important is you involve your learners in the process in the correction process so here i didn't say teacher correction i said i started with self yesterday yes sir Mu'ad, what did you do yesterday yes teacher yesterday i play tennis uh-uh yesterday i i self-correction um I'm focusing on the error. Ah, oh, I played. If the students couldn't correct himself or herself. Yes, Muna, Leila, Sal, what do you think? What do you think? Yesterday, yes, Muhammad, play, play, played, or group correction. They are going to learn when they correct themselves, when they help each other. Remember, when it is self-correction, 80% students remember and they learn. Which is teacher's correction is just 20% that students can remember. Okay, is this clear so far? Yes, please. Okay, good. So, please, when you are teaching grammar communicatively, color coding, timelines, kiss, fun activities, and error correction. Let's move on. Now, we are going to go deeper. We talk the major stages. There are three major stages. What are they? Presentation, practice, and production. Now, let's go, let's dive, okay. Grammar stages, we have many. Highlight the form. There is restricted practice. Highlight the written form. Build interest, free practice concept chicken, model sentence, etc. Okay. Can you please put them into order? What is number one, number two, number three, and number four? I'm gonna give you four minutes. Yes. So let's see your answers. Let me see the chat box. So um, number one, can you write? Let's start with number one. Number one, what's number one? 
building interest excellent ikram saudi amal good sukaina yes mona linda building interest perfect maryam various brady build number two number two yeah what do you think number two concept chicken i don't think so fuad okay model sentence excellent alex mr alex okay we will see highlight the sentence model the sentence model sentence model 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 okay all right good so let's see number three what do you think number three write number three then you can answer number three highlight the form highlight the form ines muhadis saudi highlight the form highlight the form okay uh-huh number four what do you think number four yes restricted practice restricted practice restricted practice all right we will see okay i'm not gonna give you the correct answer number five number five or number four concept chicken concept chicken concept so which one goes first concept chicken or practice ah uh, most of you got confused most no no my question which one goes first what comes first is this concept chicken or practice which one concept chicken excellent concept chicken is before practice good number five number five what do you think yes restricted and then free practice all right so let's see here let's see ah uh, look here number one building interest number two modeling sentences or a sentence highlight the meaning highlight the form chicken understanding concept chicken highlight the written form we have two spoken and written form summarize the rule generating the rule restricted practice report back report back is when the students answer the exercise either in groups or in pairs or they go to the board and write then we have free practice production and then report back students can stand up and write and answer or go to the board and write the answer now let's see here building interest so the lesson the grammar lesson is about past habits of uh, uh, i mean here used to structure the class talks about what things they enjoyed doing when they were children so the teacher can can ask students what did you enjoy when you were a child i enjoyed watching cartoons i enjoyed going with my um, with my mother to hammam i enjoyed going to um, to the supermarket etc which is the building interest now the teacher models it's a sentence to observe the teacher says muhammad used to play football muhammad used to go with his mom to hammam I, I, all the time with this sense they start having fun but it's a fact when we are kids we used to go with our mom mother to hammam okay and i use this sense why to create a fun learning environment teacher you went with your mom to hammam yeah but when i was a kid three or two etc okay then there is fun there is humor okay there is engagement motivation did you like this example or not what do you think it's a good example to to motivate to engage to have fun with your learners okay good yeah and to establish a good rapport a good uh, relationship okay with your um, learners now i i model the sentence used to play football now i'm going to highlight the meaning the teacher draws a timeline on the board showing a period in the past with several crosses within it timeline about used to number four highlight the form i'm going to focus the teacher draws a timeline on the board number five chicken understanding you will you will you will ask learners if they understood used to or not 
here what novice teachers do is that they say okay we finished this with the structure with the phone did you understand we don't say we don't ask these questions these are not concept questions these are very stupid concept questions did you understand you know why because learners will say yes because they are confused they will say yes because they are shy they will say yes because they can't say no in front of the class okay so concept questions give me a sentence about used to so uh, did you used to go with your dad in uh, or to the supermarket so yes or no yes present or past so here you are making sure if students understand or not or understood or not so please you have to plan for your concept questions okay do we use used to in the past or in the present the past habit or present habit or future habit choices okay they cannot say yes or no okay now number six highlight the written form now we focus on the structure the teacher writes the model sent on the board used to plus base form plus infinitive plus bare infinitive and then you summarize yeah the, the the structure the teacher says used to plus infinitive can can be sorry can be used or to talk about things we regularly did in the in the past but now anymore now we move to practice two types of practice remember restricted the students has no freedom to express his own or her own language so students complete the sentence starting with i used to start with i, I used to watch cartoons but now i don't or anymore or no longer okay then you report okay yes Jalal, can you read your sentence okay yes yeah in the past i used to play soccer but now yes i don't very good said muna leila okay so this is a report back then number 10 free practice students write three more sentences about their lives or they can discuss talk with your partner what activity that you did in the past but now you don't start with i used to discuss with your partners conversations role plays debates i don't like these past habits i like this okay or i, lo I don't like these etc okay now is it clear so far when we have gone deeper into the stages is it clear so far so this sample will help you a lot when you are planning grammar it's really very obvious okay so hopefully everyone said yes thank you okay let me next there's another question that most teachers ask is which one um, comes comes first is it to teach the form or to teach the meaning what do you think which one is the first to start with the form or to start with the the meaning 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 okay but yeah meaning okay how last okay the form how meaning name meaning tariq form halima okay you know the form the form meaning all right i'm gonna ask you a question the student the student i'm going to teach the student simple past okay played how how my learners can use the regular form of the simple past ed and they don't know what do we mean by ed they don't know the meaning so we start it's better there is by the way there's no perfect way but it's very effective it's very helpful to start with the meaning because i have to understand is it the past or the future or the present then i can use it i can use the form you see what, what i mean if you start with the form it's okay if you start with the meaning it's okay but for me students should understand what does ed stand for first then we can okay all right but it depends it depends on you and your learner's situation or in which you teach okay good yes 
Now, let's go back to this lesson. Look at this grammar lesson. It's practice again. Name the stages. You give me the name. Building interest, free practice, highlight the form, etc. And then name the model. Which model? Name the techniques. Name the mode of work. What do we mean by mode of work? Can you please write here? For novice teachers, they may not have an idea about it. Mode of work. What is this mode of work? Pair or group work or in the in individual work. Perfect. Individual work, solo work, solo. Or pair, two, partner, your friend, your neighbor, your colleague. Now, I want you to turn to your neighbor and talk to him or her. Turn to your partner, discuss with your friend, with your classmate. Pair. Now, all together, someone should give me the answer. It's group work. Or you can, I want you now to work into groups of four, groups of four, 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 okay. Or class correction, okay. Now, let's start with the stages. Number one, read the following dialogue and answer this question. What were Lucy's past holiday habits? What is this? So number one, what do you think? Contextualization. Okay. Free reading stage. Yeah, but it's not reading. Please, it's not, it's grammar. Leading question. Okay. So let's say this is building interest. Okay. It's the presentation. In the presentation, you can create context. You start with focus question. It says, so let's write here building interest presentation. Presentation, it's the building interest. Building interest, we can also talk about focus or lead in question. Okay, do you agree? Yeah, well, first said, please, the lecture, no, the lecture will be, we will, um, um, we will share it with you tomorrow, inshallah, okay. We'll upload it on YouTube, okay. Yes, so presentation, good. <clears throat> what else? Just presentation? Look here. Used to, used to, different colors or, uh, there is a highlighting. What's this? Highlighting what? Color coding, yeah. It's highlighting the form. Highlighting the, is it the form or the use? Let's say the form. Um, let me start with modeling. It's modeling, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, there's a, they are modeling the sentence. We used to. I also used to. I used to have. Did you used to? So, modeling the sentence. Then we have highlighting. Highlighting the, the form. Good. So, this is presentation and what? Also, we can talk about noticing, yeah. So presentation, no chasing or observation. You agree? Both. Yeah, there is the color coding, modeling the sentence. Okay, so this is number one. Next. Uh, let me just, uh, so as we have enough space. Okay, good. Now, number two. Study the sentences with used to in the dialogue and choose the correct. What is this? What is this? Highlighting the written form. Uh-huh. This is the use, the meaning.
we can say the form yeah because there is the form there the form and use both again highlighting the form and use do you agree number two do you agree okay so this is uh, now number three complete the sentences about yourself what is this good restricted practice very good and the last one is free practice perfect free practice wonderful look here the free practice write three more similar sentences about your life as a child and share them with your partner okay and then there are pictures visual visual aids to help to facilitate the learning process okay is this clear so far no comment about the stages Good. Amel said, chicken understanding. Excellent. Chicken understanding is the teacher's job. The book will not um, tell you to, um, I mean, to, to check understanding. It's your job. As a good teacher, you should know where and when to check understanding. So we can start here. So here, when you finish number two, number two, there is a concept chicken after number two it is clear so let's write it here after number two concept chicken it's you is the teacher who is going to work on that yes clear okay now which model this one which model it is a can you write in the chat box? Number two, name the model. It is presentation, practice, production. Presentation, practice, production. Good. Now, what are the techniques? Techniques. Techniques used. Look here, number one. There is a color. Color coding. Good. What else? Eliciting. Eliciting here, we have a question. To get information, it's a technique. To get information from learners. Visuals. There, is, there are pictures. Visuals. Very good. Yes. Noticing. Yes. Yeah. It's eliciting to observe. Okay. Good. Uh huh. Our observation, that's interesting, yes. Good. But the teacher can draw a timeline, it's a technique. The teacher can use a diagram, it's a technique, or a table, is a technique. Okay. Okay. Now, the mode of work. Number one, what were Lucy's past holiday habits? There is no indication here of the mode of work. It's you. It depends on the situation where you teach. It depends on your learners. What do you think? Pair work, group work, individual work. Basically, I would go for, um, for pair work. I would go for pair work. They read alone, and then they compare the answers. Or group work, okay. Group work, I prefer the production stage. Students work in groups, the production stage. Okay. All right, so I guess that's that's clear up to now, yeah? Let me move to the next one. All right, it's the end, review. Now let me see, it's a kind of uh, concept chicken. Now, these are the words, the terms we talked about, color coding, inductive, learning centered, grammar stages, PPP. Restricted practice, communicative activities, free practice, KISS, didactive, concept checking, visual aids, teacher centered. Let's start with one by one. So here, 
please write a definition. What is what done by color coding? Write in the chat box quickly. What is color code? Highlighting. Very good, Awatif. To highlight what? Highlighting what? Color, color the form. Very good, Naima. Yeah, the form, Awatif. Excellent. Target language. Excellent. Highlight the form. Badia, the form. Linda, the form. Saudi, the form. Excellent. Inductive. What do you mean by inductive? Yes, please. Quickly, inductive. Inductive. Starting with the with rules, Badia inferring meaning. Muhadis highlight the the rules for add from the rule. Okay, Linda, rules given. Starting with rules, Nadia, rules. Sukaina, example, rules. ML, okay. Jamal, rules, okay. Zwin, Najia, start with the rule, okay. Yeah, inductive. You start with the the rule or with, with the form? What, uh, sorry, with the rule or with the with examples? <laughs> examples, rule, Sumaya rule, examples, examples, examples. Examples, okay. Okay, let me go back. Just one second. Yes, look here. <clears throat> Inductive, you start with the <coughs> examples. Inductive. Deductive, you start with the rule. So, inductive, you start with what? All right, with examples. Now, learner centered. What do we mean by learner centered? Learner centered. Students are active. Good, Maryam. But yeah, folks on learner, good. Khawla learners are active, good. Ben Ramak, yeah, teacher folks on the learner, guided learner, Amal, good. Yeah, learner centered. Yes, so the focus is on the learner. Learner centered, communicative activities. Learner centered, teaching grammar as a process. Learner centered, using communication um, or communicative activities again, okay. Learner center, it's guided discovery. So, Ben Ramak, good. The learners are the heart of the teaching process. It's both the teaching and learning process. Please, can you add teaching and learning? Yeah. Okay. Borwa, students more than. Okay. Teachers, good. Now, grammar stages. My question. Now, give me the major. The major grammar stage, how? How many? Major. Three, very good for add. P, P, P. Presentation, practice, production. Now, details. What are they? How many? What do you think? Building interest. What else? Seven, Sarah said seven. Good. Building interest, modeling, etc. Concept checking, highlighting. Yeah. Good. All right. So, building interest. Modeling, highlighting the, the form or the use, concept checking, highlighting the structure, practice, restricts practice, um, uh, reports back, free practice, reports back. So many. Okay. Good. PPP, we talked about his presentation. Yeah. What do you restrict? Give me some examples of restricted, restricted practice. Give me some examples. Fill in the gap, good. Others, fill in the gap. Yeah, give me other examples. We have only fill in the gap, that's it? Other examples? Matching, very good, Samia, Jbani. Complete, hint, very good, Tina. Ma yeah, fill in and match. Choices, Mr. Udi, excellent. Sarah, matching, Azwin, matching. Najia, matching, yes, very good, yeah, matching. Reorder, very good, Tina. Reorder, yes. Reorder, complete, Dikara, good. Classify, at some. Good. Search writing with the specific words. Good, Miriam. Okay, Burwah, complete. Excellent. Now, what do we mean by communicative activities? Yeah, any explanation? Communicative activities. Interaction. Good. Dialogue. Sukaina, interaction. Jamali. Yes, uh, Amel. Mingling is yes, interaction. Saudi using contacts. 
extended the classroom good for add Miriam dialogues yeah Kautar Miriam yes Iman fair communication conversation for what yeah learner centered for what good role playing Muhammad excellent yes communicative activities are activities that engage learners that involve learners to communicate to use the language to activate to motivate to make the learner active so there is communication there is motivation there is involvement the learner is involved in the learning process non-communicative activities yeah the student is restricted the level of sentences the level of words using only words only sentences Okay. But communicative is involvement, motivation, interaction, communication, participation, collaboration. And at the end, it is learner-centered approach. Yeah, what do by free practice? Free practice. We call it also production. Yeah, give an example. You write a paragraph. Good. Dialogues is the stage of production, Miriam said. We will milk free practice with others. Yeah, produce. Okay, write an email, write a dialogue. Very good, Khawla. Saudi. Let's let students use their own language. Now, what's the definition? What does it mean? Free practice. What do by free practice? You provide with examples. Now, give me a definition. Activities that allow students to use the target language. So, okay, now, yeah, I like it. Najia, write dialogues using your own language. This is the keyword. Freedom, autonomous learning using their own language using their own language the teacher is going to evaluate both the learning and the teaching his teaching style was it good clear effective learning or not and then he is going to see learners if they have learned something or not now kiss what does this what does it stand for this acronym keep it short and simple some people say keep it short and stupid keep it stupid keep it uh-huh there are other um names okay or so keep it short and simple or keep it short and stupid keep it simple and stupid etc yeah okay now deductive remember we talked about inductive now deductive Keep it sweet, good. Yes, uh, Abdullah, yeah. Keep it sweet and simple. Yes, it's also, yeah, some teachers give it, give that name. Yeah, deductive is moving from the ruler. You start with what? It's explicit, yeah, or implicit. You start with the, yeah, rules, then examples, rules, then examples. Very good. You start with the ruler, the form the structure the learn is passive the student sorry the teacher is active okay concept ch checking when do we check understanding on which stage exactly after which stage after which stage after so we have presentation noticing practice and production so after which stage after highlighting the form, after after the production, no, Fatima Zahra. Not after the after noticing, good. Not after production, no, no, no. After presentation, after noticing, after the observation, after highlighting the form and the or the structure, the meaning, the use, etc. Then we we check understanding. Okay. Now I presented the. I give them the checks about simple past. Okay. I underline the verbs in simple past, ED forms. I finished. I finished the form. Now I'm going to check understanding. I played yesterday. Yes, who add? I played yesterday. Uh, is it the present or the past? What do you think? Ah, oh, the past. Very good. Leila, I uh, or uh, played, played. Can you put in a sentence? Can you put in a sentence? Can you use a meaningful? Yes, Leila? I play tennis yesterday. Ah, play. What do you think, others? I play. This is concept checking. 
avoid do you understand okay or you can use visual yeah visual aids for which purpose why do we use them illustrations good to build interest excellent yeah maps diagrams videos ict wonderful muhadis yeah highlighting the form yeah good building inch so you, we use visual uh, uh, aids number one for the different learning styles visual learners number two to facilitate the learning process number three to motivate learners number four variety of your activities your um, materials okay now teacher centered teacher centered Teacher is guiding. Do you think that teacher centered means teacher is guiding or providing the information, giving spoon feeders? The leader in class, good. Khawla, the boss. Learners are passive. Hasna, the teacher is active, good. Jamali, yeah, Khawla, all right. Khawla, the uh, teacher is active. Ikram, teacher is the dominant, good. Yeah, source of information, Ikram, interesting. Are you facilitating? Um, I may not agree. Facilitating is um, somehow students learn approach. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah. Bravo. Very good job. You are really great at um, giving definitions, illustrations, examples. I'm really proud of you. Okay. You have got a lot of things. Okay. In mind. And I hope that today's lesson was uh, convenient and interesting for you. Because the most important is not just to teach grammar, but to teach grammar interactively. Okay, good. So we still have about seven minutes. Yeah. Okay. Before, yeah, thank you. Now, the conclusion. The conclusion is here, please. When teaching grammar, put this here, please. When teaching grammar, there are several questions we need to ask ourselves. Number one, how can I help my learners know about the use? The use of the structure is very important. When I'm designing my lesson plan, I have to think about how to help them notice understand the use number two how can i help my learners observe the form using what timelines color coding visuals demonstration body language there are many ways okay number three uh, here we have two two it's number three sorry number three what problems might might my students face when learning the new language Maybe they will not understand the form. Sorry, maybe they will, under, they will not use the form correctly. Maybe they will not understand the, the meaning or the use. Uh, maybe I'm going to have mixed ability levels or classes, okay. Maybe the, the textbook is not um, interesting or it's difficult for my learners, okay. Maybe they need more practice. So they, they may find difficulties. So I'm going to provide them with a variety of activities, okay. And number four, which is the most important, remember when I was a child, I used to go to Hammam with my mom. What's this? How can I make the lesson fun, meaningful, and memorable? Students will remember Hammam with my mom when I, when I was a child, okay? So you have to put these into your mind, okay? Fun activities, communicative activities, etc. Yes, good, Hasna, creating enjoyable learning environment. Culture, culture background, good, yeah, all right. That's interesting. Okay, so now, basically there is a uh, um, reflection. I want you just to write what is the most interesting thing that you have learned today. It's a reflection, you have to reflect. Can you please just write one sentence? What is the most interesting thing or tip that you have learned today? Can you please share with the audience? I'm going to read them. I have uh, a question. Yes, Sumaya, what's the question? 
Firdaus, thank you very much. Yeah, most welcome. How can I let my students enjoy grammar? Yes, Mr. Udi, enjoy grammar using fun activities, using um, communicative activities, using online games, Kahoot, Bamboozle, Millionaire. There are many games online. I'm going to share with them in the coming session. Ah, you see, this was, uh, you, you learned about um, creating enjoyable learning environment. Okay, good. Teach, yeah, he teach grammar in an easy way. Good. Salah Din, not to teach grammar by the old way. Good. I, Fatima Zahra, I learned that grammar is not just about grammar. It's a hard task to teach. Yeah. Teaching grammar should be taught in a motivating is Beja, uh, good. Saida, the importance of using visual aids in the learning process. Good. Kareem, stages and techniques. Good. Umayma, yeah, I learned new words. Samak. Good and uh, reinforced deduction and inductive methods. Good. How are teaching grammar? Yeah, a lot of um, reflections. I can't read all of them. Okay, how to make it fun? Ikram. Hasna, I learned the grammar should be taught in a enjoyable environment. Mustaqil, I learned how to teach grammar communicatively. Good. Okay, so the teaching can be more effective when it is taught communicatively. Good. Jamal. Yeah, Gemma said kiss. Yeah, it, it's very fun, kiss as a word, yeah. But it's very, uh, it's, it's engaging, okay, yeah. And then you can remember, okay, you remember the kiss, okay. Keep it short and simple. Grammar is difficult to teach for Sarah, but using these tips and approach will help a lot indeed. Ashraf basically learned the difference of teaching grammar communicatively good. Muna engaged students, okay. Badia teaching grammar effectively. Burwah PPP approach, good. Wafa teaching grammar communicatively engaging students. Thank you, that's wonderful, okay. Good. So please, the, the last session will be next, um, next, next week uh, on Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we are going to have about three hours, not just two hours, but three. So you are going to teach online, which is, is a must. Due to coronavirus, and there will be a shift from face to face to online. And next school year, some expectations, they say we may start online lessons, not face to face. So we know how to teach face to face, but now it's time to teach online. I'm going to suggest, I'm going to give you a form to fill in. And if you are interested in presenting a lesson about grammar or vocabulary, because in this short course, we are going to train you how to teach grammar and um, vocabulary with the uh, how to how to use or how to design lesson plans, error correction, adaptive text, etc. So uh, I'm going to get your names, okay, based on the form, and then each one will have 15 minutes to teach a, a stage. It can be the presentation or the practice or the production. You see what I mean? And it's very important. It's not just blah, blah, blah theory, but I, all the time I, I, I'm, I'm keen on, okay, um, practice. Students should practice, okay. So if we say three hours, we may have more than 10 students, I guess, or seven or five, okay. And then there is a reflection. It's a kind of um, micro teaching, okay. All right. Is it clear? So no questions so far? Good, so as not to forget, I'm going also to give you the task of today. Please, just try to fight and write the assignments. You will learn a lot, okay? You will learn a lot. Write the assignment, share them and post them um, on Google Classroom, okay? They will help you a lot. I, I shared with you the first uh, assignment and I'm very proud of those who could um, upload them on Google Classroom. Please, if you don't know how to use the Google Classroom, the best teacher is YouTube. Yes, this is how you do. How to submit an assignment on Google Classroom, they will show you, okay. So no questions so far? I'm gonna share with you again the video about yesterday, the code of the classroom and the other materials. Okay, no questions so far, no comment? So tomorrow and after tomorrow at the same time, from eight to 10. Okay, Kareem, no comments, Brady, thanks. Okay, so everything is clear. 
Thank you. All right, so see you next time. And I'm really proud of you all. So let's call it a day. Thanks. Bye. Have a nice day. Stay safe. You are the best of the best, best teachers. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Goodbye. Yes.